Hello, welcome. We're looking at Khan Academy. We're looking at trig graphs of trig functions, and we are going to graph some functions right in their widget that they have. We're going to look at where is it? There it is. Under graphing sinusoidal functions, we're going to graph them. So let's go. So here I'm going to click this icon to write as I go along. That'll help me. All right. So. I see it says graph um, y equals 2 sine of pi over 10 x minus 7. And the first thing I want to remind myself is that our general structure is that y equals a sine bx plus d in this case, where the absolute value of a is our amplitude, where our period equals 2 pi over the absolute value of B and our midline is equal to D. That number there. So in our case, the amplitude is the absolute value of 2. So the amplitude is 2. I, I like to write this out as I go. It helps me along the way. B is pi over 10. So the period in our case is 2 pi divided by pi over 10 is times 10 over pi. Right? So that means that these are going to cancel and 2 times 10 is 20 so our period is 20 and the midline is negative 7 I'll just write that up here because I want to write something for you so in in these problems it's interesting that they give you periods purposely in this case 20 that just don't fit on the graph because they want you to use the symmetry of these functions so let's say this is our wave right here the period goes from one peak to another peak or from one valley to another valley. But the idea is that if you look along from that, in that distance from here to here, um, you could split it. You could split it in half so that these distances are the halfway marks. And then wherever the midline is, this is badly drawn by me, but suppose the midline is there and there. Those points on the midlines split your period into four equal pieces. So if our period is 20, wherever this graph is, from one peak to the other is 20. Cut in half, that means this side is 10, and so is this. But it also means that the, each of these little pieces here are 20 divided by 4, which is 5. So we can use that to our advantage. Let's do that right now. Our midline is at negative 7. Our amplitude is positive 2. So here's it. The, the amplitude would be 0. We go up 2. And the period, we can't fit a period of 10 on this graph. From I don't think we can. Can we? Right, we can't. You see what happens there? If I try to put one point here, um, I don't think I can get 10 to fit. So I'm going to instead, maybe I'm wrong about that, but we'll see in a second. I'm going to try to get the, the, this idea on the graph. At the distance between this point, which is on the midline, and the peak, so in my really, I guess, awful sketch now that I look at it, between this maximum and this midline point is one-fourth of the period. I can use that idea here on the graph, that this distance here should be 5 between this midline point and right here. And that shows me uh, here a period of 20 won't fit, right? So another thing I like to do is also plug these equations into Desmos. I find it incredibly helpful. So I think I'm done, right, with this. I think I've got it. Oops. I'm going to turn my widget off. I think I can just go like this, copy it, and into Desmos here. Let's clear up any old graphs I have. I can paste it. I got some other weird things in there. None of it really matters. OK. How did I do? Let's see. I have 2 times the sine of pi over 10 x plus 7. Is that the right function? Here, um, you can see our function. And I'm just going to check my points 0, negative 7, and 5, negative 5. I do like using Khan Academy, but it's stressful when you enter one little typo and it marks you wrong. It's very frustrating. I hope they fix that in the future. Um, they should give you, I think, one or two attempts per question. So here I can see that my two points check out 0, negative 7, and 5, negative 5. And if I go back, oops, if I go back to the problem here, I can see I've got that set up. 
and I've got it. So all the problems are pretty much like this. Let's do one more. Perfect. We've got a cosine. So here, before I start, this time, I'm just going to sketch out in my mind what a cosine function looks like. A cosine function and sine function are, of course, the same. They're shifted over. They are the same thing. Um, just kind of shifted left and right. So here, I know that uh, cosine, the parent function, is periodic every 2 pi radians. So if this is 2 pi, I know that right in the middle at pi, cosine is out, down at negative 1. So I'm just rough sketching. This is negative 1, let's say. So this is pi. 180 degrees, cosine is negative 1. At 360, the cosine is um, 1. At 0, cosine is 1. And then it comes down like this, and then back up. And I also know, finally, that these points are halfway between pi and 2 pi. So 3 pi over 2 is 0, right? The cosine of 270 degrees, 3 pi over 2 is 0. This is 2 pi 1. This is 0, 1. And this point is halfway between 0 and pi. It's pi over 2. And it's 90 degrees. The cosine is 0. This helps me think about what I'm about to write, which is that with an amplitude of 1, okay, so we have an amplitude of 1, we have a period of 2 pi over pi over 12. So 2 pi times 12 over pi. Pi is canceled, and we get 24 and a midline of six. I'm gonna think of this period split into four parts. I'm looking to get a distance of six. Let's write this down for myself. 24 over, uh, over 24 over four is six. I'm gonna have that reference for myself. I'm gonna write it down so I don't forget. Okay, so how do I use all of this information to create a graph that makes sense? I'm gonna scramble my graph here. Okay. With a cosine graph, I you know I don't have room for a period of 24. I just don't have it. So I'm looking for a midline of 6. That's one of my first things I try to establish. Get my midline. And at first, I might want to use this point and put it at 6, but that won't do it, right? I need a midline at 6, so I'm going to rely on this point as my midline. And the amplitude's 1. So I've got a midline at 6 and amplitude at 1. But this point is a maximum, and this point, where is that? On my graph over here, put a, that's this chunk, I'm actually. I thought I was going to represent this chunk down here, but I have a hard time doing that. So I'm not going to do that. It's going to be this. Why? Because I've got a maximum here. And the next point I can focus on, one-fourth of that period, is, four, is uh, six units. So I'm going to bring this back to six. And if I type that into Desmos, I can see that I have a graph that works. And here's the point. 6, 6, and 0, 7. And again, I highly recommend checking this on Desmos because I find, actually, these two points hard to work with. And I'm not sure the design of the program, why they did it this way, but I find working with these two points uh, fairly frustrating. Uh, although I do like that the scale of the graph makes you break down the period into smaller chunks. So we'll just check that, and we got it. Um, I'm going to stop here. The graphs are just like these two examples. Thank you.